So this is part of my morning ritual. Usually I will wake up, this in hand, um, make sure I'm on, up to date with whatever appointments there are for the day, and then just see how many emails. So right now I've got 73 unread emails. Um, so I'm kind of on track. <laughs> so I run a business called Pigeonhole. Uh, we've been in operation for just around five and a half years now. We started as a little shop and now I've got five stores. We're not like lofty design snobs, it's not really what we're about, but we're about having interesting, fun, quirky products that are accessible to a wide range of people. In the car with me is my lovely fashion manager, Crystal. Hey guys. We're on our way to a viewing. Uh, basically a viewing is when you go see a brand and they have all their clothes out on display for you to choose from. Today we're going to see Stussy, big international brand, um, but they have actually got Australian designers doing Stussy Australian range and it's, it's pretty good. It sells really well for us in our menswear store, which is in Northbridge. Hmm. Yeah. So basically we're going through the clothes, find the ones that we like. These are going to arrive in July, still going to be a bit cold, so Maybe jumpers are okay. And then we put them on this rack here. I guess how I've learned how to do my buying, big process of trial and error, mostly lots of error. And I think the other thing is like doing a lot of travel. Uh, I guess the more you travel, the more you see, the more you see in other stores, the more you see in other brands. And I guess from there, you can kind of work out what is different, what is new and what is exciting. Oh, hey Maxi, how's it going? We're trying to negotiate a lease, yep. uh, a short-term lease. They potentially are going to offer us something extremely good deal if I moved in tomorrow. I think the day after tomorrow. <laughs> so, um, but we're in negotiation because I think I that's a bit hard for us to do. And also we might want to have a potentially a longer period of time than what they were offering. We don't have to move in straight away, but basically he's like, I need to know today if you're going to be doing this and when you're going to be thinking about moving in. Okay. Well, I graduated from law and I think it's helped me quite a lot and it trained me in the way that I think. I've done all my leases by myself and most of the agreements that we've done, I've done by myself. The thing is like, what we need to work out is firstly, what is this agreement? Like, are we, you know, like, are they wanting a profit share on this? So I will say three month trial because it's not a big space. I think we need to heavily market this as well. I think staffing is the hardest part about business because you want to bring together a group of people that really love what they do. Finding those people is like a challenge in itself. And then they also have to get along really well with each other and they have to get along well with you. Yeah, overall it looks really good. Do you reckon, is there a way that we can have four images? Like they're quite big, don't you think? Yeah, I've already emailed him and he hasn't replied. He hasn't replied? Yeah. When did you email him? Um, Wednesday. Wednesday, yeah. it's Friday now. Harass him. Okay. Well, I started with nothing and no one, and then I grew very, very quickly. It's probably about 60 people within sort of the five year time frame. It's, I guess that the challenge there is knowing what it means to be a boss, what that looks like. People are always gonna have some sort of fear or dread or something about their boss in certain, some way or other. And so there's that sort of, you know, that reflecting on, like reflecting to you when you have to sort of deal with that on a day-to-day -day basis, sort of upsetting people or dealing with their emotions or dealing with your own emotions. And I guess that's the hardest part for me. I wouldn't really call myself a risk taker as much as an opportunist. I think that's kind of the way I approach things because I don't really see the potential negative as much as I see the potential positive. Just in my shop on the other side of the city, one of the stores that I've got over here. You just kind of pop in just to see what's going on, kind of just to check to see whether things are looking the way that they should. So I design a lot of the accessories in the store. I mean, it's fun to be creative and design stuff, but I personally, I think my creativity is just as satisfied in opening a store and like designing the layout of the store or doing an interesting window display or something like that. If I had gone from law school, five and a half years ago, and I was working as a lawyer. By now, I'd have a lot more money in my pocket than I do. <laughs> but I don't think I would be as happy as I am. And I don't know if I'd be able to wake up every day and be excited or amped for work.
Hey, how you doing? My name is Mark Pulisvic, and you just searched theories of entrepreneurship. I mean, it's kind of funny. I never, I'm not, I don't really consider myself someone who seeks theories, but it's pretty cool to to learn about it because how I spread my business, how I how I practice entrepreneurship myself is I have a, a, one of my strategies is I I find keywords that people are looking for, and this this term theories of entrepreneurship actually gets 1,300 searches a month, and so it's it's clear.